Hey everyone, Mariah Talia Farrow with Premier Sotheby's International Realty here in gorgeous Sarasota, Florida. And today I'm joined by Paul Allen, who is the principal of Wealth Strategies Partners, based in Nashville as well as here in Sarasota. So thank you, Paul, so much for joining us. You are clearly exceptional at what you do between the awards through Forbes magazine, both in 2018 and 2021, and the fact that he's quoted in Tampa Bay Times multiple times in a row. So. He's exceptional. We're so grateful to have you here. So we're really going to talk about the financial industry and how it relates to real estate. We've really seen a lot of changes since the onset of COVID early 2020 here in the real estate market in Sarasota. Um, you know, there was definitely a, a bit of a recession from our economy in general. There was an amazing rebound and that really stimulated a lot of activity in the real estate market to where we're seeing that some could argue a little bit of an inventory crisis where buyers um, are seeking out properties and not able to find them. So demand has definitely outpaced supply big time. Paul, tell us how your business has really changed since COVID. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I'm honored uh, to be here with you. And uh, just like your world uh, changed, mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, my world changed and the whole financial industry mm -hmm. changed through that and kind of the biggest takeaway when i think of the pandemic um what i will remember by it is a how violent the stock market dropped i mean the stock mm -hmm. market dropped 40 percent mm -hmm. in two months mm -hmm. but what was interesting about that drop versus other uh bear markets that i've mm -hmm lived through it over the past 26 years mm -hmm. is the fact that people didn't seem to care too much mm. about their money mm. you know people were scared about getting sick and they had loved ones that were dying and and mm -hmm. uh so it was a completely different uh type of uh market that i've ever been through mm. um so it, uh, hopefully we don't have to go through another one, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's very interesting to hear. Um, would you say that most people in general didn't seem to care so much about the drop? Was it just that they didn't express any stress or they really weren't calling you trying to come up with another strategy to overcome that? Well, we were very proactive in mm -hmm. communicating with all the fam all the families we work mm -hmm. with uh, and giving historical data that, hey, we always get through these things, mm -hmm. sit tight and we will get through yeah. it. I just think that, uh, you know, people had other things mm -hmm. uh, to worry about than mm -hmm. their equity portfolio. Understood. And, well, that's uh, good. They had priorities yeah. too. So how does that compare to where we're at right now then in the stock market? Um, now they're worried more about their stock market <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, and, and where we are with okay. that. So, uh, you know, uh, just like the things that you're, that you talk mm -hmm. to your clients about, uh, how long is the real estate market going to continue mm -hmm. to do this? and and uh, you know we get the same thing uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to investing in equities of mm -hmm. you know how long is the stock market going to go up and mm -hmm. when is this bubble going to burst and yeah. very similar to what you're going through got it so on that note what are you what do you tell them well um it's uh i've been telling them the same thing uh today that i've been talking to clients about for the last six months mm -hmm. and um and actually it has a lot to do with your world mm -hmm. uh you know when whenever what what keeps me up at night from a financial planning point of view is not the stock market dropping and it going down over a month's time mm -hmm. frame or having a couple of lousy months. Mm -hmm. That from a financial planning perspective, that doesn't blow up financial plans. You mm -hmm. know, what, what keeps me up at night is the stock market dropping and staying down for mm -hmm. three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden financial planning uh, mm -hmm. is uh, blowing up. Yeah. So, uh, but with the 10 year treasury bond at one and a half percent or mm -hmm. wherever it was today, even though the markets have done well, uh, I think as long as interest rates remain low, mm -hmm. I just do not see a scenario where these money managers uh, are going to give up on buying stocks and holding stocks mm -hmm. and, and making this long-term shift into bonds mm -hmm. okay. and not even keeping up with inflation for their shareholders. Got so it. 
We believe that as long as if, if interest rates remain low, mm -hmm. that should still provide a favorable environment for stocks. Understood. Okay. Well, on that note, you know, we've seen a, a marginal increase in, yep. you know, in rates. And I know the Fed has proposed increasing rates, yep. you know, middle to end of next year. So kind of talk to us about how that would impact both of our markets yeah. if that were to happen. Yeah. Well, um, I do think the Fed's going to raise rates, mm -hmm. um, and the question is going to be how, how much, how much <laughs> yeah. and what type of jolt will it, mm -hmm. and is it going to be too much mm -hmm. and cause us to go into another recession? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't believe that's going to be the case, okay. uh, and quite frankly, I don't believe that they're going to raise rates enough to where it would deter investors from okay. investing in stocks. Uh, you know, you mentioned the Tampa Bay newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, in an article uh, several months ago talking mm -hmm. to talking to them, mm -hmm. and I was giving. We were talking about interest rates and mm -hmm. how much interest rates have to rise in order for people to sell stocks. Okay. To invest in the bond market. Okay. And. Um, over the last 100 years, in order for there to be a long-term flight out of stocks mm -hmm. and that money flow into the bond market, the lowest the 10-year Treasury has ever been is 4.9%. Okay. The mean is 6.5 to 7. Okay. So, yes, I do believe the Fed's going to raise rates. Is the 10-year Treasury mm -hmm. bond going to go to almost 5%? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to go that high. Okay. So. Well, that's relieving to know. And, and it's funny because we were talking about this in our last um, office meeting where there is this notion that when rates go up, home buying goes down. And actually, when you look at the historical data, that's not correct. It yeah. continues to go up. Now, we're not talking about rates that probably were from, you know, multiple decades ago, where it was 12%. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that would impact people. But, um, you know, we've seen that it would continue to, um, people would continue to buy in real estate. So do you, do you think that if rates were to increase, is that going to impact one buyer type over another? For instance, you know, the high net worth buyer that's probably typically paying cash, yep. you know, they're probably gonna pay cash anyway, but we have seen that more people uh, find that, hey, rates are so low, why would, I, why would I pay cash right now? Why wouldn't I just go ahead and get a mortgage anyway? So I know this is kind of a loaded question, but do you see that if rates were going to go up, it would impact different different buyers differently, essentially? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, where I live in Sarasota, uh, it was taking forever for the building to be completed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at a, a cocktail party and I was talking to some, other the, some of the other residents and, mm -hmm. I, and I made a joke about, gosh, it's gonna take so long, interest rates are gonna skyrocket. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and those people looked at me and said, what does interest rates have to do with anything? Mm, so yeah. they were they were using cash. Yeah. So uh, so to answer your question, mm -hmm. no, for the cash mm -hmm. buyers, I think it has to do with very little. Mm -hmm. um, for those people that utilize mortgages, sure. um, you know, if we see those rates go higher on the mortgages, yeah, that that may mm -hmm. affect demand a little bit. But mm -hmm. again, when you look at where we are historically from an mm -hmm. interest rate environment. We're you know, okay. They, I think we're going to be okay. Got it. Okay. So as you're looking at where we're at and you're forecasting 2022 in, in your industry, what do you see as being like the outlook? You know, assuming rates don't really change or don't change dramatically, are there any other indicators that people should be paying attention to that aren't? Yeah. Um, you know, any particular day, the stock market can go up or down mm -hmm. and then there's a million different way there's a million different reasons of claims of why it did what it did mm -hmm. i mean something could happen in the ukraine mm -hmm. and the markets go down or there sure. could be a storm in the gulf and an oil rig uh, yeah. gets goes down and and that could cause the market to go down but um we believe that uh the, the market the stock market at least of what mm -hmm. it's done the last three years it, you know, that's abnormal. Yeah. You know, it's not going to, we're not going to continue to go up 20% a year. Okay. Uh, 
But I do believe, again, if interest rates remain low, mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that investors need to be prepared for volatility. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're going to kind of get more normalized returns next year. Okay. Uh, if, if someone, if I had to put a guess on it, I would say high single mm -hmm. digits next year. Okay. Um, so with all of this in mind of what you just said, what is your 2022 forecast? Well, I definitely don't think it's going to be what it's been the last three years, mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. at least for the stock market. Uh, the last three years, the markets have been up north of 20% a year. Mm -hmm. And that's abnormal. That, yeah. that, that doesn't happen. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be dealing with next year is more than likely interest rates will rise sure. next year. And that uh, is going to cause more than likely some short-term volatility when mm -hmm. it happens. Okay. But, uh, you know, kind of an interesting fact about interest rates rising. Uh, over the last 60 years, there's been uh, 13 times that interest rates have risen more than one and a half percent over an interest rate cycle. And okay. the, uh, and the interesting thing about that is over the over those 13 times the past 60 years, guess how many times the stock market was down? I would imagine a good amount, right? Once. Really? Interesting. And the average return was almost 12%. Wow. So a lot of people get spooked okay. about interest yeah. rates going up, but the... But they really the, don't have that much of an impact. The reality is, is yeah. they don't. Interesting. So. And that's the same thing that we see in real estate as well. So that's interesting. So focusing on the stock market specifically, Paul, you know, economic theory really indicates that there are really three main causes to a recession, right? You have number one, sudden changes in the economic conditions. Number two, overexpansion um, of credit during those expansion periods. And number three, the euphoria, the psychological factors yeah, that it has. Yeah. So, you know, my, my question to you is, you know, we've been in a bull market for about nine plus years. And so a lot of people are, are feel that the, uh, the stock market is a little bit overinflated, so to speak. So with that in mind, if, this, if the consumer index continues to go up, what do you think is, what is going to be the trickle down effect of that? <laughs> yeah, one of my, uh, great question, by the way, and one of my, me being a little bit of a stock market historian, uh, I love quotes from some of the world's best investors. Mm -hmm. And and uh, one of a uh, person that I've always admired as one of the world's best investors is a guy by the name of John Templeton, uh, who eventually started Franklin Templeton Investments. Mm -hmm. But uh, he always said that uh, bull markets are built on pessimism. Mm -hmm. uh, they grow on skepticism. Mm -hmm. They mature on optimisms and they die on mm -hmm. euphoria. Hmm. And uh, so I don't feel like that the stock market is in a euphoria phase. I mean, okay. quite frankly, this la the, the last nine years that we've had, of, and it has been a tremendous mm -hmm. bull, mm -hmm. but it's been one of the most hated bull markets ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I still feel like if we believe what John Templeton said is true, I still think there's a lot of skeptics okay. out there yeah, about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I would feel like that there's almost more euphoria, specifically in the Nashville real estate market, okay. that there, the real estate market may feel a little more euphoric, okay. at least to me, sure. uh, than the equity markets do. So let's talk about that. Um, what would you define, at least we'll say John Templeton, yeah. right? Well, yeah. How would he define euphoria, would you say? <clears throat> oh, well, you... Um, I'll give you a great, I'll give you a great uh, sign of euphoria. Okay. Uh, before the stock market bubble burst with the, uh, with the tech crisis in the uh, 2000s, mm -hmm. 1999, 2000, mm -hmm. you could walk into a mall and there would be computer terminals set up for people to day trade their accounts wow. while they were shopping. Okay. That's euphoria. That's interesting. Those are people that don't know the risk that's associated, yeah. and they just yeah. think just buying stock, they can make money. Okay, got it. When you start getting hmm. stock picks from your Uber driver, yeah, that's euphoria. Got it. Okay. So I guess I would say, I don't know about the Nashville market, but I no. would say that our baseline, let's say the fundamental concerns that I feel most people have are more based on what's gonna happen with supply and what's gonna happen with prices, right? Because that's where our challenge is. I mean, it's a, it's a great 
it's a great problem to have if you're a seller, but if you're a buyer, not so much. Yeah. So, and people are walking into these situations kind of trying to be more, more educated, especially if they came from the 2008 financial crisis yes. and the real estate crisis. So I think that from my experience working with the people I worked with, their decision to move down to Florida specifically is because they want to get out of Dodge from these uh, high tax states or any just political volatility that they're experiencing. And they also do it for lifestyle, right? So it's a little bit more of a financial and, and lifestyle motivation. Would you consider that euphoria? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I, I still think that uh, it comes down to a supply and demand mm -hmm. uh, exactly. equation. And when you look at states like Tennessee and states like Florida and specifically mm -hmm. cities like Nashville and Sarasota, mm -hmm. uh, there is still a tremendous amount of demand mm -hmm. to be yeah. here. And it has to do with uh, favorable taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, it has to do with favorable lifestyles. Mm -hmm. It cities, lots yeah. of fun things to do. So, um, and I don't particularly see supply there being an right. issue with the uh, oversupply. So right. yeah. even though I think that there, uh, I think that you could argue we're in a seller's market, mm -hmm. but I Absolutely. don't particularly think that we are euphoric okay. uh, here uh, because great. I think the supply and the demand equation still rings true yeah. for, for Absolutely. this to be good real estate here. I agree. I think the question that probably rings in the back of my mind, so I'll speak for myself, but I have heard this question from other clients is, you know, what if we're wrong? And, and if we are wrong, something happens to the stock market, what, how much of a sell-off would actually have to happen to really impact the portfolios of those high net worth clientele to where they end up reconsidering their real estate purchase? Yeah, uh, great question. The reality is, is who knows? No one mm -hmm. knows what's going right. to happen short term with the stock market. So, um, but there is a thing called the wealth effect, and uh, the wealth effect is what people feel when they open up their investment statement mm -hmm. every month. And mm -hmm. if they open up their statement and the statement has gone up and they feel richer, mm -hmm. then that's a yeah. positive wealth effect. Uh -huh. Vice versa, if we're in the middle of a correction, then uh -huh. then uh, people feel poor. And there's uh -huh. a psychological component of that. Um, I believe that as far as how much would it take for the market to pull back in order to adversely mm -hmm. uh, affect demand for real estate, mm -hmm is if the markets drop 10%, I mean, that's a normal correction. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happens okay. historically every 14 months. Okay. It's normal, it's healthy, it's supposed to happen. I think if we had a 20% drop, okay. uh, that's where you fall into a bear market mm -hmm. and that's where, uh, that's where people start worrying about their jobs, mm -hmm. they start worrying about their businesses, they start mm -hmm. hoarding cash. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be that 20% range that I think people would start being hesitant okay. uh, to do away with cash to right. buy real estate. Understood. Okay. Paul, the stock market doesn't seem to really care about inflation or the supply chain issues that we're experiencing and the overall economy seems to be doing really well. Are there any other indicators that the general public is not considering and the media is not really talking about that we should be thinking about? and? How does that impact your own investment strategies that you recommend to your clients? Are you bullish or are you bearish? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, we, we are very long-term investors and, uh, and our investment philosophy is focused on long-term uh, investing. But as far as the short-term indicators, um, you know, when you when you look at housing permits, you mm -hmm. know, we're still in an expansion phase. Yeah. When you look at job sentiment, when we look at retail sales, when mm -hmm. we look at wage growth, all of those are in an expansion phase. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the indicators are telling us that, uh, that we're still in a very favorable environment. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if interest rates remain low, mm -hmm. I do believe that the equity markets for 2022 should continue to be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would have to say I'm in the bullish camp. Okay, good to know. So I guess a message to our viewers is, 
if you're kind of on the sidelines on you know whether or not to actually invest in real estate maybe it's time to to move forward on it because there's not really per se an end in sight to where you're ready to capitalize on another you know housing crash opportunity it doesn't seem like that's that's going to happen um, but it also seems like if things are going to continue to to rise and to increase it's a it's a worthwhile investment but not only that, it's a wonderful place to live, especially if you're looking to invest in Sarasota, yeah. right? Look at this, yeah. <laughs> not too shabby. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, but Paul, this has been an amazing, amazing discussion. I so appreciate all of your insight and your expertise in this area. Um, I'm sure we'd love to have you again featured, but for those people that might wanna contact Paul, we'll definitely have his contact information um, at the end of this video. He has, as I mentioned before, he's based in Sarasota as well as in Nashville and clearly knows a lot. So thank you all very, very much for tuning in and thank you so much, Paul, again. Well, thank you for having me. It's been mm -hmm. fun. Thank you.